Hi everyone, let's take a chance to work through some uh, starter code with Altair. Uh, we'll work through some histograms and uh, look at some of the variations we can do. Um, so to get started, uh, we're going to be using Altair and Pandas. Um, so I'll run these. Uh, we're going to use the Penguins data set. Um, so that's, that's here as well. Um, and we'll just go ahead and, and load that data set uh, using, using Pandas. Um, right from the URL. So we'll load that live from the uh, Vega website. Um, and we added an index here. I don't think we'll need it. Uh, we'll need it today. But um, let's go through and build out a handful of different bar uh, chart types. So first, we'll start with a basic bar chart. Um, so again, if we want to get started in Altair, right, we're going to do alt.chart of the data. Um, that's going to give us our, our basic uh, chart object. And then we'll give a mark. Uh, so we're doing a bar chart. Uh, so we'll give it a mark bar. Um, as you saw before, if we just run a mark bar, um, right, we get a single uh, a single bar for every data point here. Um, and so we want to go and build the bar chart. Um, so here, let's do it by, well, let's take a look at our data. I think we want to do it by species. Sounds sounds good. Um, we can see what we got here. Uh, species looks like a good a categorical uh, column we can group by. Um, so let's go ahead and do uh, bar chart by species. So uh, to do that, right, we're just going to do our encodings. Uh, so our encoding on X, um, let's build it horizontally. So let's pick uh, X to be the to be the count. Um, so we can let uh, Altera do the aggregation for us by just giving the uh, count column. And for Y, right, we're going to want to break this down by by species. Um, so we'll also let Altera figure out the data type for us on this. Um, and I think this will give us the basic bar chart. Um, cool. Um, if we did specify the data types, um, we could do species as a, a nominal, right? And counts, of course, is going to be quantitative. Um, so we can specify those. It doesn't change it because Altair uh, figured those out for us and put them in the chart spec for us. Uh, so we didn't have to say it explicitly. Uh, so, so next, uh, let's go and add a title. Um, so uh, to add a title to this, right, uh, what we can do um, is store this chart. So we can call this our our chart, right? And then we can go ahead and run it there. Um, same thing, it's just putting the, that chart variable as, as what's uh, printed in, in the, on the uh, out in the Jupyter Notebook here, um, running on Collab. Um, if we want to see how this really works, and I think this is worth diving into a little bit, uh, the chart here, right, is actually printing the HTML. Um, so, and the HTML is then what's getting uh, displayed. So we can look that here, um, chart.2html, if we print it, right? So this, this chunk of HTML is actually what you're seeing the chart from. Um, because we printed it, right, uh, Jupyter is just giving us the text block, um, right? And if we want to actually allow uh, the notebook to render HTML that we give it, um, we have to import a helper. Um, so the way that this works is um, we could import from, I think, IPython, yep, yeah, IPython. Dot display import HTML. Um, so HTML is the, the function which will go and actually render that for us. Um, so if instead of print, we wrapped it in HTML, um, right, we're going to get that chart. Um, so this is really what's happening under the hood. It's dumping a big chart string. Um, if you looked inside that chart string, right, you'd see the Altair spec and the Vega, um, sorry, the Vega Lite spec, and then the Vega Lite embed code um, that goes and embeds the chart here. Um, Cool. So now we've got chart. Um, so one thing we can do is we can continue to modify this chart. Um, so if we want to set a title, right, that's going to be chart.properties. Um, so here is a properties title. Um, and, you know, this is our penguins data set. Um, so there we go. We can add a title, you know, and again, the, the default um, output is going to be that the HTML that gets rendered. Um, OK, uh, maybe we want to add uh, labels on the on the count. Um, so this is uh, something that we can do as well. Uh, maybe we'll keep our properties. Um, one thing that we can do now is uh, with this chart object, we can take everything that is um, already encoded here and reuse these encodings. So we've got the X and Y position already. Um, so what we can do is we can change the mark. So let's set uh, this to be mark text. Uh, and right, we don't see anything because we didn't actually give it a text encoding. Uh, so we'll say here, why don't we make the text uh, encoding be the species? There we go. Uh, <laughs> uh, so text. There we go. Species nominal. We actually uh, did I spell it wrong? S P S. Uh, and oh right, we want to. We that's actually we're setting the text right. We want this to be at the count. 
What am I doing wrong here? Mark text. Oh, I'm setting it on the text, so I'm setting the text directly, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and set the encoding. Uh, so encoding, encoding for text, right? We want that to be the species. Text dot encoding. Mark text. Faceted encoding object not callable. Oh, yep. And again, I've done this wrong. Uh, so let's do encode. There we go. So we got the three species names. And you know, I thought it'd be helpful to encode the um, to actually encode the count. Um, so we can do that. Right? We lost the bars. Um, so one thing we can do um, with um, Vega Light and Vega Charts is we can actually stack them. Altair makes this really fun. Um, so what we can do is we have our our text here, right? Um, and we can go ahead and just um, add them if we want Altair to stack them. So there. Um, we can go ahead and take our, our bar chart, which we had, and our text chart, and add them together. So it's going to actually go and layer these charts um, when we add them. So this, this is uh, pretty handy. Um, and you know we did mark text, so we can actually, on this where I was setting the, the raw text, we can actually go and give it a little bit of like an offset if we want. Um, so we can move them a little bit to the right. Um, and I think you know, we also might want to align them to the left. Right, so we can see them at the end. Yeah, so we can actually read them here. Cool. Um, so now we have the text, right? And we can continue to, you know, use this to to layer, um, right? The addition operator. We'll look at a few more operators later. Um, but we can add. We can also uh, concat or uh, horizontally concat them, and we can also vertically concat them, um, right? Uh, so we can we can do any of these, right? We can layer, um, and this gives us a lot of options uh, for for breaking down charts. Here, right, we just wanted the text labels, uh, so we can do it that way. Uh, so next, let's go ahead and add some stacked bars. Um, so to, to stack them, we're going to go ahead and change some of our encodings. Uh, so here we'll take our basic chart, which again is uh, just this bar chart. So we've got data, mark bar, and, and these two encodings. Um, if we want to make it a stacked bar, uh, we just all we really want to do is encode uh, some other attribute with the color, right? So to do that, right, we can um, just add the encoding for color, um, and I think island was one of the other columns. Uh, let's check on that. And so here we go, we got it. So we got the island as a as a stack bar chart. Um, pretty, pretty cool. Um, we might want to actually see, you know, what the counts are because that's one of the one of the uh, perceptual problems with the stacked bar is, you know, it's now hard to compare these uh, dream island counts because they're not aligned, so that the length isn't helping us. Um, so we can add a tooltip to pull out that data if we want. Um, so we can encode the color, right? And then I think if we just do mark, if we reset the mark bar and we do tooltip to true, this will give us the tooltip. And yeah, so we can hover here and do it. We could also uh, set the tooltip manually. Um, we could do the tooltip encoding. And we could say which columns we want, right? Um, tooltip, we could give it a list of, you know, counts. Island. Right, but Altair can do that for us. Um, so, yeah, now we only have count and island. <laughs> so we had a little more uh, with uh, with doing it. Uh, just on the tooltip, true. Also gave us a species, yeah. Okay, uh, those are some of the basic things we can do that I wanted to run through. Um, the next uh, the next bit, right, that uh, we saw how to do in D3 and in uh, Vega Light, right, was make it a pie chart, donut chart, radar chart. Um, actually, we, we can't do those in Altair right now. Um, and the reason is the uh, Altair is using Vega Light 4.8. So I think we're on, let's check our Altair version uh, right now. I think we're on version 4.1. Yeah, and the internal Vega Light version this is using is like 4.8 something. And we can go ahead and actually see that if we just take this chart and take a look at the spec. And let's go ahead and call it. And uh, well, we got the full data set in there. Um, so, one thing we might want to do. Um, it's just encoded with the URI. If you want to be looking at the spec directly, it's going to help us to just encode it with the URI. So let's do this. Uh, let's start over on that chart. 
uh, with the URI. Uh, mark bar, right? We still uh, need to do now our X encoding. So X was going to be the count and Y the species. Multi chart URI mark bar. And I print it. Ah, uh, so let's do island nominal. Uh, so uh, Altair can't guess and fill these in for us, right? Because it's not actually seeing these. Uh, so we're going to have to tell it by hand what the data types are. And there we go. So it's a little conciser because a little more concise because we have uh, the data as a URL. Um, and you can actually see that the, the Vega uh, light spec this is, is actually written right in here, right? It's 4.8.1. So we need 4.9 to do the um, mark arc, um, to do an arc. And what we can do if we want to play with that, right, is we can, I can't seem to see the full draft down here, but let's give it a try. Um, we can open this up in Vega Lite. Oh, shoot, you know what? That one's got the full data. So let's just do, um, let's do this one. Let's go ahead and plot it. All right, it looks the same. Um, if we go and open this uh, using the editor, Right, it's not going to have to send the whole data over. Uh, we can just uh, we have it as the URL. It's a little more manageable here. Um, if we want to use the latest uh, Vega light, right? We'll just say we want version four. Okay, everything's still working now. But um, if we want to go and change this to do some of those other charts, right? We could do a mark arc. Um, here we've got some circles, and we can we can work with the latest version here. Uh, probably by the time you're watching this video, uh, Altair has the um, will have the mark arc in it because they'll just rebuild it from the uh, Vega Light spec. Um, so here, right, you just are going to do mark arc, right, and give it the theta encoding um, to do to do the uh, pie chart. Uh, but let's go ahead and do it here, and you can see how you'd actually map it back to Altair. Um, so if we go to the, let's keep the color. Uh, well, let's get rid of the color. Let's keep colors island. Why we don't need any more. It's picky about commas because we have to have valid JSON. Here we go. So we can actually, and we want to set uh, theta. Looking better. And I think that's it. Yeah, we've done it. So we've actually gone ahead and done our, our pie chart. Right? There are some other options. Uh, here we did the tooltip, so we got it. Um, you can go, if you want to make this into a donut chart, right? You can give it an inner, inner radius. Um, here, maybe inner radius of 50, um, 100. Um, yeah, and we can go ahead and uh, actually encode the radius itself uh, using uh, the data. So we can do something like radius and tell type. Let's just go ahead and take this one. Let that a comma here, and then you can go ahead and put this in. Um, Ooh, yeah, so put the radius uh, starting at each of those. Uh, so it did uh, stacked. Uh, so here, I think the default stack true, stacked false. Um, should we set the radius? And we can go ahead and, and customize all of these with the inner radius. Um, mm, the radiuses are set. I think we want to set the uh, starting position. Uh, oh, it's because we, we set the inner radius here to 100. So we can get rid of this. OK. And uh, let me start. So we're gonna stack true, stack true. All right. Well, you can definitely do this one. Uh, I would say uh, we can go uh, go back to the the Vega Light and and see how this one is built out all the way. Um, and of course, you know, once this is available in uh, Altair, we'll be able to do it. I did want to highlight uh, the the issue on GitHub because I think if you want to, you know, dive into to how the how the thing is put together, right? On Vega Lite, people are saying, "Hey, I need a, I need an arc mark or a pie chart." Um, so uh, they just raise the issue. A lot of people want it. Um, 
And you can you can dive through here to see um, all the different ways that it might be implemented and some of the under the hood details about you know how should we do it? Should we do it using Cartesian coordinate? Um, maybe we could use Arc like Vega. Um, and I think that's what they ultimately end up doing. But there's a lot of people weighing in on maybe different ways to do it. You could use a, a geographic projection um, and set the polygons um, to be the position. And, and that's what he did here for, for these. Um, and you've, you know, you've got various people weighing in, um, you know, the developer of Altair is in here and they're all making different um, considerations on, you know, how should we build this out for our visualization tool? Um, and I, I think you've got, uh, Leland Wilkinson, who wrote the grammar of graphics, uh, on maybe how this grammar could be done. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of interesting thought in here. If you want to see like what goes into into some of the choices that are made behind these APIs, um, and that's some of the basics on buildings out in Altair. I'll, I'll keep my eye out for when the uh, when the Mark Arc gets rebuilt into into Altair's latest version, um, and probably add an update here. <laughs> All right, um, thanks for watching.